first chapter of the book Flamingo. And this is for class 12. Although I have a recorded video of this, I have live videos also of this chapter. If you want to go through, go through them. I'm doing it again on request of few of my students. I'll be reading the chapter line by line and we'll quickly see what the chapter is about. Here the main protagonist is a little boy, Franz. The situation when the story starts is after effect of a war. How the districts of Alsace and Lorraine, they go into the hands of Prussians and how when they took over Alsace and Lorraine, how the people were forced to leave learning French language and orders were passed that from the next day onwards, German language will be taught to the people of Alsace and Lorraine. What do you think? How would you feel if you are told to learn a new language? How would you feel if your district or country is taken over by someone else? We need to ponder over this. We'll quickly read the chapter and see how people of these two districts feel. They regret that they still didn't know their language, that is French language. And the orders had come that now they had to start learning German language. Mr. M. Himmel, the French teacher who was teaching in a school for last 40 years, he had to leave the place. He gives his last lesson to the class. Who all attended his last, his last lesson? What was the reaction of the villagers? What was the reaction of Franz, our protagonist and the narrator? Who is the protagonist, the main lead role? He's a lazy boy who doesn't like to go to school. We'll see, does he regret? Why didn't he like to go to school? What is the importance of language? All this is very important. So let's start with the chapter and see what all Alfonso Dode the writer of the chapter has to say. I'll read line by line and we'll quickly run through the chapter. All right, my eyesight has become very weak, so this is better. Alfonso Dode, who lived from 1840 to 1897, was a French novelist and a short story writer, right? The last lesson is set in the days of Franco-Prussian War in which France was defeated by Prussia that was led by Bismarck. You must have heard about Bismarck. We will not go into detail about Bismarck but you should know this. Prussia consisted of the nations which are now Germany, Poland and some parts of Austria. In this story the French districts of Alsace and Lorraine have passed into the hands of Prussian, uh, Prussians and even, you know, we will see in the chapter that the Prussians have 
come here they have started drilling they have started doing their march past and all all right and how now they have to uh, shift from learning french and they have to now shift to learning german language all right so we start with i and i here is a little boy franz the narrator of the story is franz i started for school very late that morning and that was in great dread of scolding especially because m himmel had said that he would question us on participles you me we all have learned participles so that day mr m himmel had to question the children on participles and franz was not prepared with the chapter he was in a dread of getting scolded by mr m himmel and i did not know the first word about them for a moment i thought of running away and spending the day out of doors it was so warm bright the birds were chirping at the edge of the woods and in the open field back at the saw mill the prussian soldiers were drilling it was all much more tempting than the rule of participles but i had the strength to resist and hurried off to school so now franz is not prepared with the chapter on participles he doesn't know anything about them he knew he would be scolded that is why other things were more tempting he didn't want to go to school in fact the prussian soldiers drilling was more attracting the bir the birds that were chirping at the edge of the uh, at the edge of the woods they were more uh, attractive he was getting tempted to go over there and in the open field where the prussian soldiers were drilling i told you he just didn't want to go to school in fact going and seeing all this was even more tempting when i passed the town hall there was a crowd in front of the bulletin board now as we have seen he says that still things were tempting he did not want to attend school but he had the power and the strength to resist that temptation and he headed straight towards the school now when he was going he they he had to cross the town hall where always there was a bulletin board a bulletin board where all the main bulletin or the news the latest news the breaking news were put up on that bulletin board so now when he crosses let us see what he sees when i passed the town hall there was a crowd in front of the bulletin board for the last two years all our bad news had come from there the lost battles the draft the order of the commanding officer and i thought to myself without stopping what can be the matter now so now franz also knew that all the bad news about losing the battle about people dying about orders you know different types of orders that used to come always those negative news everything came from that bulletin board and now since when he was crossing he saw many people standing and crowding near that bulletin board he you know had that thought now what was the bad news that was there on the bulletin board then as i hurried by as fast as i could the blacksmith watcher who was there with his apprentice who is an apprentice his assistant reading the bulletin called after me don't go so fast bab you'll get to your school in plenty of time now it so happened that when he was running he was hurrying towards school the blacksmith was standing there reading the news blacksmith's name was watcher and his assistant was also there both of them were standing near the bulletin board and they saw this little boy hurrying towards school and they told him not to hurry because he had plenty of time he could reach and learn whenever now he did not understand franz the little boy did not understand why he was told this i thought he was making fun of me and reached m hemmel's little garden 
all out of breath. Why all out of breath? Because he had been running and rushing towards school. Already he was late. Usually, when the school began, there was a great bustle and that could be heard in the street, the opening and closing of desks, lessons repeated in unison, very loud with our hands over our ears, ears to understand better and the teacher's great ruler rapping on the table. Now we have also seen this hustle and bustle early in the morning. You know, children are keeping their things, they are settling, desks are being opened, desks, desks are being closed, the teacher is rapping the table to make people quiet. Children, in few classes, things have started and children are repeating something in unison. So that is always there early in the morning when the school starts. But now, it was all so still. But today, when France reached school, everything was silent, everything was still. There was no hustle and bustle, no rapping of the ruler. This was something strange that France got to see. I had counted on the commotion to get into my desk without being seen. But of course, that day, everything had to be so quiet as Sunday morning. Through the window, I saw my classmates already in their places, M. Hemel, walking up and down with a terrible iron ruler under his arm like this over here i had to open the door and go in before everybody you can imagine how blushed and how frightened i was every day you know franz used to get late but in the hustle and bustle and every day's commotion he would quickly move in the teacher would not come to know and he would go and seat himself in the desk. But today it was all so silent, all so still. No hustle and bustle, no commotion, no noise. It was as still as Sunday morning. Why is it still on Sunday morning? Because the, everybody has a holiday. The school is closed. So today it was so quiet. And when he saw through the window, he saw all the children, all his classmates in their seats. And Mr. M. Hemel with his ruler under his arm, iron ruler it was, he was walking up and down the class. He had to go in in front of everybody. So embarrassing it must have been. And he was frightened that he would be scolded. But nothing happened. M. Hemel saw me and said very kindly, go to your place quickly little Franz. We were beginning without you. I jumped over the bench and sat down at my desk. Not till then when I got a little over my fright did I see that our teacher had on his blue co uh, his beautiful green coat, his frilled shirt and the little black silk cap all embroidered that never wore that he never wore except on inspection and prize days so now you know uh, mr m hemel did not scold him in fact very nicely he told him to come and get seated and he said little friends we were starting without you so this was something you know strange every day he was scolded he was so frightened of mr m hemel but today m hemel had not scolded him and you know when he went he had seated himself and had come out of the you know the fright that he was in he started observing everybody and especially mr m hemel he noticed mr m hemel wearing his beautiful green coat frilled shirt all right and a little black silk cap that was all embroidered and he never wore it on regular days. He wore it only on inspection and prize days. You know, when you have guests, when there's a special occasion, you dress up differently. So today, Mr. M. Hemel was dressed differently. This was a different, you know, attire altogether. Besides, the whole school seemed so strange and solemn. Moreover, you know, everything, there was no commotion, no hustle and bustle, so strange and peaceful and solemn. What was it? Franz, our protagonist, the little boy, he did not like school. He was lazy. He had not studied, but he was an observant child. He was observing so much. 
and later we will see uh, we have already seen that he had the courage he had the strength to resist all temptation he did not run away to uh, look at the birds or the soldiers who were drilling he came straight to school all right then he was very observant of the people standing in front of the bulletin board near the town hall so he has great observation power and now he has observed you know different type of dress worn by mr m m n everything was so quiet everything was so strange we will see how this boy observes so many other things and so sensitive he is we will see uh in the chapter to come let us see we we'll, let's continue but the thing that surprised me most was to see on the black on the back benches that were always empty the village people sitting quietly like ourselves the old hauser hauser he was the farmer with his three cornered hat the former mayor former the previous one he had already been a mayor and now someone else must be there so former mayor all right uh, was seated over there the former postmaster and several other others besides everybody looked sad and hauser had brought an old primer thumbed at the edges and he held it open on his knees and with with his great spectacles lying across the pages now everything seemed so strange and when you know he turned round he saw that the back benches franz saw that the back benches which were usually empty were today occupied by the former mayor the former postmaster the old hauser he is an old elderly man he is a farmer or right? it he was seated there and he had brought a primer he had pages uh you know pinned to that his spectacles were lying there so you know this was something strange why were these village people here these old village people here in the class what was wrong so this was going on in francis mind while i was wandering about it all m hemel mounted his chair that means he got up and sat down on the chair and in the same grave grave serious and gentle tone which he had used to me said my children this is the last lesson i shall give you the order has come from berlin to teach only german in the schools of alsace and lorraine the new master comes tomorrow this is your last french lesson i want you to be very attentive now when the teacher spoke in a grave in a very serious tone very gentle but serious tone he told everybody that it was the last french lesson and orders had come that everybody would be taught german from the next day and so mr m hemel was giving his last lesson and he wanted everybody to be very attentive what a thunder clap these words were to me thunder clap so very shocking to hear oh the wretches that was what they had put up on the town hall my last french lesson why i hardly knew how to write now franz is a sensitive boy he regrets that he did not know his lessons well he felt very bad that it was his last lesson he had not learned french he had ignored he had neglected his studies neglected learning french and let us see what all goes on in his mind i should never learn any more i must stop there then oh how sorry i was for not learning my lessons for seeking birds eggs or going slanting at the czar my books that had seemed such a nuisance a while ago so heavy to carry my grammar and my history of saints were old friends now that i couldn't give up and m hemel too the idea that he was going away that i should never see him again made me forget all about his ruler and how cranky he was 
so now he is feeling very very sad that just a few minutes before his bag seemed so heavy you know your bag your books they seem to be like a burden when you don't want to study things you don't want to do in life and you are forced to do then you feel the burden of them but when he comes to know when franz comes to know that it was his last lesson he feels very very bad he has a feeling of regret that he has not learned french he didn't know the history of saints he didn't know the lessons well and now he would learn no no more moreover mr m hammer he was so afraid of m hammer he knew he would be scolded every day he knew how cranky he was that is what franz thinks about him but today he is feeling bad that m hammer would go and he would not be there to teach them any more franz feels very bad so this shows his sensitive nature poor man it was in honor of his last lesson that he had put on his fine sunday clothes and now i understood why the old men of the village were sitting there at the back of the room it was because they were sorry too that they had not gone to school it was their way of thanking our master for the 40 years of faithful service and of showing their respect for the country that was theirs no more so now you know franz is in thoughts he's thinking he's he's in regret that he has not learned his lessons well he forgets about the ruler and how cranky mr m hml was he feels bad that m hml would go and now he realizes that it was his last french lesson day when he knew just nothing and why the villagers were sitting at the back benches because they had also not learned french and today they were there to pay a tribute to be grateful to mr m hml for his 40 years of service there and it was also a tribute that they were paying to their country which was now in the hands of other people with the country which was not there which now they did not own alsace and lorraine were the districts that had passed into the hands of prussians as i told you prussia at that time is now germany poland the whole area of germany poland and some parts of austria while i was thinking of all this i heard my name called in it was my turn to recite what would i not have given to be able to say that dreadful rule of participle all through very loud and clear and without any mistake but i got mixed up in the first words and stood there holding on to my desk my heart beating and not daring to look up so now his name was announced you know he was in thoughts when suddenly he heard mr franz paul mr m hml call out his name and he was told to recite the lesson he wished franz wished that he would not make a mistake and he would read very nicely so much he wished he also wanted to make mr m hml happy he also wanted to pay a tribute but no franz had not studied he didn't know his lessons so he got mixed up with the words in the beginning only and he did not dare to look up at mr m hml he was so sorry he just kept looking down holding his desk let us see what was the reaction of mr m hml i heard m hml say to me i won't scold you little franz you must feel bad enough see how it is every day we have said to ourselves bah i have plenty of time i learn it tomorrow and now you see where we have come to ah that's the great trouble with alsace 
she puts off learning till tomorrow now those fellows out there will have the right to say how is it you pretend to be frenchmen and yet you can neither speak or write your own language but you are not the worst little poor france we have all great deal to reproach ourselves with so m hemel says see i will not scold you little france but i want you to realize that when there we had plenty of time we ignored and neglected our learning french and all the other things and now those other people will come and rule over alsace and lorraine and now when they will come and see that people who call themselves french men they don't know their language well they don't they cannot speak or write well would it not be so mocking and then he says that it is not only your fault miss little france we all are equally to be blamed and then he goes on to say reproach means to find fault all right he goes on to say your parents were not anxious enough to have you learn they preferred to put you to work on a farm or at the mills so as to have little more money and i i have been to blame also have i not often sent you to water my flowers instead of learning your lessons and when i wanted to go swim wanted to go fishing did i not just give you a holiday so then he says see your parents did not want you to attend school they felt that they would uh sent you they would put you to work on a farm where you could earn money for them so they were not very interested in your learning any language or in your studies and then he after blaming his parents he takes the blame on himself too and he says that even i am to be blamed because there were times when i used to send you out to water my flowers and the day Mr M Hamel blames himself for this and he also says that when Mr M Hamel he says that when i wanted to go for fishing i used to give you all a holiday so i am also to be blamed because they had never expected anything of this sort to happen then from one thing to another mr m hamel went on to talk of french language now after all this he starts talking about french language that was their language and uh, it was their last day to learn french french language saying that it was the most beautiful language in the world the clearest the most logical that we must guard it among us and never forget it because when people are enslaved as long as they hold fast to their own language it is as if they had the key to prison so he goes on to say that french language was the beautiful most beautiful language the clearest and the most logical language and he goes on to tell everybody that if you hold fast to your language see our country has got different types of religions but there they have different types of languages so he says that even if you are put into prison even if people have captured your area or your district you are enslaved as long as you hold fast to your language you all will be united and when you all are united with the base of your language that will be the key to the prison you need to have unity amongst yourself and what is the common factor that will keep you united that is your french language all right and as we all know language what is language language is a vehicle language is a medium vehicle 
medium to propagate their culture of a place all right it is a means of communication it is the sole thing that keeps you united all right language if you all are of the same language then you have the key to the captivity or the prison that you are put in so we need to emphasize on this part of the chapter where importance of language is being talked about all right and uh, we should know that language common language can keep us united all right in our country we have different types of religions religious communities stay together although ours is a secular country all right but uh, this also plays a major role and yes language does play the key role all right so then he goes on to say then he opened after talking about language he opened the grammar and read us our lesson i was amazed to see that i understood everything very well all he said seemed so easy so easy i think too that i had never listened so carefully and that he had never explained everything with so much patience so today you know when he started teaching grammar everything seemed to be so very easy and today franz felt everything was so easy in fact he must be you know puzzled as to why he did not listen why things were so difficult before he also felt that mr n hammer was teaching in a better way today with a lot of patience without any anger so it is you know both ways the way you teach and the way the other people other person your the students grasp it should all go matching right it seemed almost as if the poor man wanted to give us all he knew before going away and he put all into our heads at one stroke after the grammar we had a lesson in writing that day n hemel had new copies for us written in beautiful round hand franz or alsace franz alsace they looked like little flags floating everywhere in the school room hung from the rod at the top of our desks so now next was the writing class and the lesson of uh, where they had to write things and mr m hemel because it was his last day he had new copies for everybody with you know uh, beautiful uh, it was written on the those copies franz alsace franz alsace and these copies kept on every desk looked as if there were small flags you know there at uh, all the tables looked so beautiful and franz was observing everything so very nicely this is all that franz has observed and told us you ought to have seen how everyone set to work and how quiet it was so you know franz was noticing everything everything was silent everyone as soon as they got the new copies they started writing the only sound was scratching of the pens over the paper once some beetles flew in but nobody paid any attention to them not even the littlest ones who worked right on tracing their fish hooks as if it was french too so you know what all did franz notice that these copies looked like flags everybody started writing there was no sound absolute silence was there only the scratching of pens when they were writing on these copies could be heard few beetles flew inside you know there are times when beetles or these you know flies come into the class and everybody there's a commotion in the class but today everything was silent nobody noticed those beetles even the little children who were sitting in the first uh in in the front of the class the first few benches they were also tracing the fishing hooks with such a lot of concentration as if they were writing french the whole class was in silence and working with such a 
great deal of dedication. On the roof, the pigeons cooed very low and I thought to myself, will they make them sing in German, even the pigeons? So, you know, France, little France has got so much to think today. While looking at the Beatles, looking at the children, looking the everybody in the class, he, you know, looks at the pigeons who were sitting in the class and he, you know, questions to himself that whether the pigeons would be made to learn German language the next day. So, you know, everything was so strange today. So much was going on in the mind of Franz. Wherever I looked up from writing, I saw M. Himmel sitting motionless in his chair and gazing first at one thing, then at another, as if he wanted to fix in his mind just how everything looked in that little school room. Fancy. For 40 years, fancy means imagine, for 40 years he had been there in the same place with his garden outside, the window and his class in front of, in front of him. So, you know, Franz, while Franz also starts writing and while writing, he looks up at the teacher and he sees Mr. M. Himmel sitting absolutely quietly, looking at one thing, gazing at things, you know, that were there inside and outside uh, that classroom. As if he wanted to, you know, grasp everything in his mind because he had to leave that place. And imagine a person who had lived at the same place, taught in the same class for 40 years, had to leave this place. Only the desks and benches had been worn smooth. Everything was same. The desks and benches, because they get worn out, so they had been painted and, you know, made smooth and tough. The walnut tree in the garden were taller. He had put walnut. What is walnut? Walnut is a croat. Alright. He had planted those trees and now they were taller. And the hop vine that he had planted himself twined about the windows to the roof. And hop vine, you know, it's uh, the vine that curls here and there, twists and turns. So that was there growing, you know, all through the windows. How it must have broken his heart to leave it all. Poor man to hear his sister moving about in the room above packing their trunks. For they must leave the country next day and just see little Franz is so observant. He observes the walnut tree. He observes the hop vine. And then he is able to hear someone, you know, moving trunks on the top floor. And little Franz and everybody else knew that the sister was there packing things. So sad and sorrowful it must have been for Mr. M. Himmel. Let's move on. But he had the courage to hear every lesson to the very last. After the writing, we had a lesson in history and then the babies chanted Ba, Baby, Bo, Bo. So that is their ABCD. Down there at the back of the room, old Hauser had put on his spectacles and holding his primer in both hands, spell the letters with them. So even Hauser, old Hauser, I told you the farmer, the elderly man who was wearing a three-cornered hat, he was also sitting there and today he was also reciting everything. He was wearing his spectacles and reciting. You could see that he too was crying. His voice trembled with emotion and it was so funny to hear him that all that we all wanted to laugh and cry. So Franz notices old Hauser. He was wearing spectacles. He was reciting. But while reciting, he was so emotional that he was crying. And his lips were trembling as he recited. He looked funny, but everything was so sad. Ah, oh, how well I remember it, that last lesson. All at once, the church clock struck 12. Then the Angelus. At the same time, the trumpets of the Prussians returning from drill sounded under our windows. So exactly at 12, they were able to hear the clock struck 12. Then the Angelus was heard and then they could hear the soldiers marching back. The trumpets and everything were being heard. 
M. Hamel stood up, very pale because now was the time for the school to get over. He was all very pale and sad. So grief stricken he must have been. In his chair, I never saw him so tall. My friends, said he, I, I, but something choked him. He could not go on. Then he turned to the blackboard, took a piece of chalk and bearing on with all his might, he wrote as large as he could. Vive la France. What do you mean by this? It is long live France. Then he stopped. He didn't have, you know, he had got all choked. He was not able to speak anything. He was so sad, so sorrowful. So he just wrote by Villa France, that is long late France. And then he stopped, he leaned his head against the wall, he did this. He was so sad that it was his last lesson. And without a word, he made a gesture. He did this, that school is dismissed, you may go. So it was just a gesture with his hand. So this was the last lesson. Now let us see what are the main things that we need to know. We need to know about little Franz. What all tempted him? Why didn't he want to go to school? Right? So he regrets that, you know, that he used to be tempted towards the chirping of the trees. He used to go and search the bird's eggs. He used to go, you know, slipping at the czar there and enjoy himself outside looking at the Prussian uh, soldiers drilling. All that was more tempting and attractive. Then, but he resists himself. He goes uh, to school on the way. He sees that many people were standing at the town hall reading the news that was put on bulletin board. Uh, but he did not have any time uh, to stand and ask. In fact, the blacksmith watcher and his assistant they told him not to hurry because there was plenty of time he could reach school he didn't know why they had said this in fact he felt france felt that they were making fun of him because he was late uh, but uh, he hurried he still hurried without giving another thought to it he reached school and he was surprised to see the strange atmosphere uh, he uh, every day there was a hustle and bustle there was a lot of commotion and in this commotion he used to move in even if he was late without being noticed and he used to go and sit in this bench but today he saw all the classmates were there in the uh, their places and uh, no tapping of uh, the ruler could be heard. He saw Mr. M. Hamel walk with his iron ruler underneath his arm and he was very frightened and embarrassed entering late but he was very politely taken in uh, in a very serious and uh, calm tone. Uh, he was taken in and made to sit and when he sat down he noticed that Mr. M. Hamel was wearing uh, a very beautiful green color coat uh, with frilled shirt and his uh, hat was there all embroidered and he was you know uh, there was a question in Francis' mind that why uh, Mr. M. Hemel was dressed uh, so in this way because this type of dress was worn only on prize distribution days and inspection days. And then after that, he noticed that the back benches were uh, occupied by the old houser, the former uh, postmaster, postman, and even uh, the mayor. And it was this was something you know very strange. Uh, he didn't know why they were sitting. And uh, after that, Mr. M. Hemel, he sat down and uh, he told everybody uh, that it was his last uh, French lesson day. And from the next day, German lesson would be taught because these orders had come. And so now he realizes that this was the order that was there on the bulletin board and why people were crowded in front of the bulletin board. And then uh, he felt uh, he, he felt a fear. He had a feeling of regret that he that it was his last French lesson day. And till uh, now, he did not know the lesson well. He did not know his grammar well. He could not read and speak well. And he feels very bad for Mr. M. Hemel who he felt he was frightened of his uh, ruler he felt that mr how he has he had always felt that mr m hemel was uh, 
a little cranky but today he felt very bad for the teacher also he felt bad for himself because he had not learned anything well and he felt that just a few minutes back he did not want to go to school he dreaded coming to school because he was not prepared with the chapter on participles and uh, the books of history uh, of saints everything seemed to be so heavy just like a burden but now uh, he would not be able to learn anything about them anymore he felt very very bad and now when you know and so he realized that that all these people sitting in the classroom these old people these villagers uh, they were sitting here and everything was so strange still and solemn just like a sunday uh, it was the atmosphere he realized that is why he realized that it was all because of this and these old people were there uh, to uh, show their gratefulness to uh, give a tribute to mr m hml who had spent 40 years teaching in that same school and also a tribute to their country which was not any there anymore uh, there uh, it was not theirs now because it had been uh, taken up by the prussians and as he was thinking all this he was told to read uh, but he wanted to read well but he was not able to recite anything nicely he felt very bad and mr m hamel uh, tells him that there was nothing wrong he was he would not scold him but he wanted franz to realize that he had not taken his studies seriously uh, every day you know he had ignored and all the students who do like this usually you know feel that they have plenty of time and they would learn uh, sometime uh, other some other day so he tells about all this and he also uh says that uh, he also uh, talks about his parents saying that his parents also did not want uh franz to study in fact they wanted to send him to farm to work so that he could also earn money and he blames himself also for this and he says that even he was to be blamed because there were times when he used to send franz out to water his flowers and also when uh, mr m hamel wanted to go for fishing he used to give a holiday to the students so he does all of that and he goes on to talk about language and he talks about the beauty of french language he says that it was the most beautiful logical and the clearest language and if people even if they are enslaved hold fast to their language it can uh, it could serve as a key to the prison it could help them to come out of this captivity it some day you know they would could they would be united and definitely they would fight and get their country back get that district back all right and after that he starts exp explaining the chapter of grammar and today he was explaining so very nicely or franz must be you know learning with such a lot of concentration that today he felt everything was so very easy and he uh, he also felt that mr franz was teaching in a more uh, with a lot of patience after that they uh, had a class of writing everybody was given a similar type of books and it all looked just beautiful with you know in round and writing uh, franz elsays franz elsays was written every table every child had that those new copies that mr m hml had brought for them it they just looked like small flags all right and franz was observing everything over there and everybody started writing there was total silence and everybody uh, was writing and franz uh, observed that there was only the sound of scratching of the pens when they were writing even the small children were in full concentration they were coloring and painting their tracing their fishing books as if they were also writing french beetles entered but nobody had time to look at them and uh, even franz questioned you know himself that whether these pigeons who were there in the classroom uh, if they would be also taught to learn german language uh, even now when he was observing all this uh he also started writing and he noticed mr m hml looking at different things in the classroom and even outside and even uh, franz started looking at everything everything was same for the last 40 years imagine a person you know staying at one place and had to leave everything all together uh the walnut trees which were young before now they had grown taller the hop vine that was planted by mr m hml they were twisting round all the windows uh the desk and tables were same just they have been smoothened up and mr m hml was observing everything trying to grasp everything and this was all noticed by 
uh, Franz and after that he also noticed someone moving trunks on the top floor and he knew that Mr. M. Himmel's sister was there. She must be packing everything. After this chapter, after writing lesson, they had the history of lesson. Then small children recited their uh, alphabets. Old Hauser also, he was wearing his spectacles. He was also reciting and while reciting, he was crying and his lips were trembling. Although it, he, everything looked, uh, looking at him was a little humorous. But the whole atmosphere was very sad and Franz says that he remembered all of that so very clearly. Just then the clock struck 12 and the Angelus was heard, the trumpets were heard, the drum was heard, the Prussian soldiers were walk, uh, marching past back to their places after their drill and uh, now it was time for the school to get over. Mr. M. Himmel, who became very pale and uh, weak and yellow, he was looking, he got up. And because right now he did not have the strength to say anything, his uh, throat was choked. He just took a chalk and wrote Vive la France, that is long live France on the board. He leaned his head towards uh, the board and then because he could not say anything, he just gestured with his hands that school was dismissed and now the children put go. I hope you understood the chapter well. We'll meet in the next video. Please comment in the comment section. Also let me know what else you would like to do for me to do regarding this chapter. Then we'll move on to the next. Do you want question answers video too? Do let me know. We'll definitely do everything for you. Bye.